Hey everyone, before we get started with today's episode, just wanted to remind you all that we are off next week, so there will be no new episodes on Monday and Thursday. We're taking a little break to enjoy the fireworks and celebrate the 4th of July. We'll see you after the break and enjoy today's episode. Hello and welcome to the Professional Book Nerds podcast. This is Joe. Hi, hello. Welcome to today's episode. Today, of course, is that magical time of the month where we look at the upcoming month's books and share what we are most excited to add to our TBR. Before we dive into our July book picks, wanted to remind everyone to rate, review, and subscribe on Apple Podcasts or Spotify. It really helps us out and helps us reach more readers just like you who want our book recs. So thank you if you've already rated. And if you haven't, we'd really appreciate seeing those five-star ratings come through. You can follow us on social media, Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok are at Pro Book Nerds. You can see what we've been buying and adding to our bookshelves recently, along with a lot of other fun, you know, peeks behind the scenes. And then of course, if you have questions, comments, or suggestions for the future, send an email to professionalbooknerds at overdrive.com. With all of the business out of the way, Emma, hello. Are you ready to talk about July books? Hello. I am ready to talk about July books, and our list this month is long. It is a lengthy list this month, and it felt like killing my darlings, only picking 10. <laughs> it did. It really did. I don't know what is in the air, just maybe summer publishing season, but everything I see is the ticket, and I just so want good. all of these books. I know. I'm, I'm like clamoring, and I was also trying to challenge myself because, of course, I'm in the vibes right now. Like, I want YA, I want thriller, I want horror. Like I am in my specific mood right now. Mm -hmm. So I was also trying to make sure that that wasn't too reflected because there's so many like just fab books coming out. Right. There's a lot. Before we dive in, did you find the book? Emma is currently trying to order a signed, <laughs> okay. yet another signed so book. Here's the thing. Pro, I, well, do I want to reveal my secrets? They're not really secrets. Pro tip that I love lately is when authors post their book tour event lineup on social media or on their website. And when they go to local indies, bookstores or whatever, most of them will have an option for you to order a signed copy if you do so prior to the book event. And so I, as you may or may not know, like to have an interview shelf. I have a copy of all of the books that I've done interviews for on this podcast, which over the last year and a half is uh, quite a few just books. Just a few books. So just this, a yeah, just a few books. This habit is not good on my wallet in the slightest, but if I am able to, I like to try to get the copy signed. Um, for the interview yep. purposes. If it's not signed, that's fine, but, but all the more if it's signed. <laughs> we're trying signed first and foremost. Yeah. And honestly, what a cool way to support local bookstores. Yes. Even if they're not in your state, if you know that your author is supporting that store, you can do it as well. I think that's, I think that's super cool. And like another, yeah. another cool way to just support the world of books. Exactly. And like, I definitely no shade to Barnes and Noble. We've talked mm -hmm. about like Barnes and Noble borders a lot. I think on the podcast in the past, I love supporting local bookstores yeah. even, or like indie bookstores, even if as Joe said, it's not local to me. So there are a few of my favorites that I'll always order from, even if they're in San Diego or in, you know, Nebraska or whatever, because I get such wonderfully packaged, pristine signed copies from them. Absolutely. So shout out to all of the local booksellers because you are doing the work. Oh, well, what a good <laughs> vibe. No, what a good vibe to start off on, honestly. So do you care if I kick us off? I care greatly, but okay, I'll well, then allow you can it. start. No, it's fine. You start. You start. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Joe, please tell me about your first pick. Okay. My first pick, I am not starting off strong as far as like not sticking to what I'm vibing with right now, but I am starting off strong 
with what this book is. This is a thriller filled with suspense from the delightful Shari LaPena. This is Everyone Here is Lying, out at the end of the month, July 25th. Welcome to Stanhope, a safe neighborhood, a place for families. William Wooler is a family man on the surface, but he's been having an affair, an affair that ended horribly this afternoon at a motel up the road. So when he returns to his house, devastated and angry to find his difficult nine-year-old daughter, Avery, unexpectedly home from school, William loses his temper. Hours later, Avery's family declares her missing. Suddenly, Stanhope doesn't feel safe, and William isn't the only one on the street who's been hiding a lie. As witnesses come forward with information that may or may not be true, Avery's neighbors become increasingly unhinged. Who took Avery Wooler? Nothing will prepare you for the truth. So that is Everyone Here is Lying by Shari LaPena, out July 25th. I feel like you can always count on her for a good thriller. Every time. Every good, single time. Good, creepy, atmospheric. I also love that a lot of hers kind of fall in the neighborhood genre. Because I, it immediately, I think of like Disturbia, that movie from the early 2000s with Shia yeah. LaBeouf. Yeah. Oh my gosh, what a classic. <laughs> it's It's that kind of vibe where it's like, from the New York Times bestselling author of The Couple Next Door. Like, this is this is that. Like, you don't know what to expect until all of a sudden you're in a little too deep. And I like, um, I think I prefer a neighborhood that's unhinged over, like, a whole community or a town or a, you know, yeah. city or estate. Like, just a, a tiny microcosm. And I like that you said Disturbia and not Rear Window. <laughs> I love Rear Window. That... that that lies is like one of my top movies. Mm -hmm. But Disturbia. And I, and I know Disturbia is a modern update of but it Rear was like Window. Peak. But it was peak. so good. Peak Shia LaBeouf. I am that age. Like, of course I said Disturbia. <laughs> no, I know. I feel the same. I just love that we were on the same page that like the reference is Disturbia, even though we know full well it's that rear it's a window. take on Rear Window. <laughs> I can go into my first pick. We're completely shifting the mood as I tend to do by going to a romance at, because I'm just not ready to talk about the thrillers yet. My first pick is Hello Stranger by Catherine Center. This is out on July 11th. And the tagline for this book is what got me, as well as it being from Catherine Center, because she always just writes a great romance. Love isn't blind. It's just a little blurry. And I'm like, oh, pique my interest because of all the hype over Love is Blind and that whole uh, show and saying. So Sadie Montgomery is riding high off of a huge accomplishment. She's just placed as a finalist in the North American Portrait Society competition. And as a portrait artist, this is a huge dream come true. But when a minor medical procedure turns into something a lot more major and complicated, she wakes up in the hospital without the ability to make sense of human faces. So this is a real thing, which I did not know before uh, reading about this book, but her surgeon says that those effects are likely temporary. It obviously completely turns her world around while she's trying to navigate in this in-between time before things presumably return to normal. And so with the help of a friend, she tries to just focus on her paintings as best as she can before the competition with all of this going on. And naturally, as all of this is happening in a romance, she falls in love slash in lust with not one, but two men. They're both completely different. They bring completely different things to the table between her career, the face blindness, her romantic entanglements, and taking care of her precious dog, Peanut, Sadie has a lot of her life to sort out. So this is Hello, Stranger by Catherine Center, coming out July 11th. That sounds so cute. And what a premise. Right. I think it's a really interesting premise for a romance. It kind of takes away that, like, that you initial You don't have to attraction. suspend as much disbelief, mm -hmm. I think. Yeah. Yeah, I had definitely heard of face blindness before, but I didn't realize, or I guess I had never seen it used as anything other than like, maybe there was an episode of House. Like, yes, or like on Grey's Anatomy or something. Right. But yeah, as a premise where the focus of this romance sort of takes away that initial attraction or that initial like 
love at first sight type of thing when your site is upside down or you can't really tell unreliable, unreliable, then yeah, you're falling in love with ideally the person personality. And I just think it's a really interesting take for a modern romance and Catherine Center delivers every single time. Definitely one to look forward to. Um, I will pull my romance, which is also my science fiction. Uh, but before they, I do that, I have to issue my notes app apology here. I've lied to you all. I meant to not pull things that fit the vibe of my reading right now. And I did not do that. <laughs> I, I said that. And then I started to look at all of my titles and they are all either a uh, thriller horror or horror thriller YA, some combo in between. So sorry, y'all, you are getting exactly what I'm vibing with for July right now. Oops, except for two titles, this one and uh, my last one. So apologies. We like what we like. We like what we like. And right now I am, do you ever just hit that like reading high where you are finishing like, set like a book a day it feels like it's not really a book a day but it feels like a book a day that every time you stop reading you're like I did that yeah when you're just in that like natural momentum of reading I feel like we've both been in a really good reading spot lately where all of the books we've read recently have been hit bangers yeah they're like something keep this momentum going we just got to go with the vibe right so oops I'm I am like a machine with books right now so all that said, uh, here is my my one of two deviations. Sorry for the false promises. This is A Song of Salvation by Alicia Dow out July 11th. So Alicia is the author of The Sound of Stars and The Kindred. This is a YA space opera about a reincarnated god and a grumpy pilot on a mission to save a beloved space DJ and stop an intergalactic war. I like a little chaos in my books. Zyra Sitlali is supposed to die. After all, she's the god Indigo Reborn, Indigo whose song created the universe and unified people across galaxies to banish Osvios, the god of destruction. Although Zyra has never been able to harness Indigo's powers, the Ilori Emperor wants to sacrifice her in Osvios' honor. Unless she escapes and finds Wesley, the boy prophesies to help her defeat Osvios and the Ilori once and for all. Wesley Daniels didn't ask for this. He just wants to work as a smuggler so he can save enough money to explore the stars. Once he completes his biggest job yet, bringing wanted celebrity Ruben Rima to a strange planet called Earth, he'll be set for life. But when his path crosses with Zyra, he soon finds himself in the middle of an intergalactic war with more responsibility than he bargained for. Together, Zyra, Wesley, and Ruben must find their way to Earth and unlock Zyra's powers if they're going to have any hope for saving the universe from total destruction. So that is A Song of Salvation by Alicia Dow out July 11th. It sounds like a fun romp to me. I clearly, I love an adventure story. I love a gang of kids getting together to achieve a common goal. I think the art is really beautiful on the cover. I think it just sounds like a good time. It sounds really good. And I always love a premise where if they don't figure it out, the result is total destruction. (laughs) Right. Total annihilation of the universe and then its subsequent rebirth. Right. Way to raise those stakes. And I, this is where I really get into romance as well, where it's the kind of like, oops, we fell in love along the way that romance is the secondary subject or plot. So I'm, I'm very much into that. That's why like romanticy was a, a big smash for me that the, the antacy was the, the yes. chief and the, the rom was the, you know. Yeah. I mean, obviously I love romance, but we did talk about it in that whole romanticy episode where it takes our love of the fantastical and inserts those elements that we enjoy of romance, but it's not the primary function. So I feel like that is a great way if you like fantasy, if you like sci-fi to get maybe a little bit more into the romance genre, if that's not your cup of tea. Definitely. What's your next pick, Emma? My next pick is going to pivot us to thriller again. 
you'll see my picks are in no particular order other than vibe and that they will go between romance, thriller. I've got some young adult in here. I've got some literary fiction. Woo. Look at me branching out a little bit, but my next pick is Prom Mom by Laura Lippman. This comes out July 25th. Now, if you are into thrillers, you'll be no stranger to Laura Lippman books. This one follows Amber Glass. She is a tabloid sensation. So picture it, prom night, 1997. Amber gives birth to her date, Joe's baby, prematurely at prom. She wakes up discombobulated in the bathroom with no memory of what happened and no baby, and she's charged with manslaughter. So a notable prom, like how traumatic. While Joe, the father of the baby and her prom date that night, he gets off completely scot-free. Apparently he wasn't even there. He was too busy pursuing another girl at prom. After Amber spends 20 years in prison, repeat that, 20 years in prison for this manslaughter charge, she's hesitant to ever return to her hometown of Baltimore because everybody there knows her by her tabloid nickname, Prom Mom. But when she is released from prison and her life ends up taking her back to her hometown in Baltimore, she decides to open an art gallery, an interesting choice, (laughs) and shocker, it draws Joe right back into her orbit, even after all this time. He's never left Baltimore because he got off scot-free in this whole tablet mess. So... The only difference, I guess, is that Joe is now married to Meredith. She's a plastic surgeon. She's gorgeous. She's well-known in town. But I guess Joe really didn't change that much because he's still got a Rolodex of women, his wife included, and now including Amber again. So this is set against the early days of the COVID-19 pandemic. And obviously it goes back to prom night in 1997. So you have that juxtaposition of those timelines and you just see Joe and Amber playing this dangerous cat and mouse game. I read the Kirkus review of this, which also really intrigued me more than anything else, but it just, they said it's a character study of pedestrian evil in the Wegmans and Peloton class, fascinating in its heartlessness. So the whole point, like this thriller it's so good, but it, again, it's just sort of that character study on all of these unlikable characters and they're working towards some big epic conclusion. You know, what really happened on prom night? How did Joe get away scot-free? All of those things. Prom Mom by Laura Lippman out July 25th. Wow. 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 Um, atmospheric as hell. It yeah. sounds like. Mm-hmm. That sounds so good. A lot to unpack. And the cover is really captivating. It's very bright, which I will say was also really intriguing. I love Laura Lippman books. She's like an one that I always check for, for thrillers, but the cover is bright yellow and pink. Yeah. Hard not to notice. Ugh, that sounds so good. Yeah, and Kirkus getting cheeky with the Wegmans and Peloton reference. <laughs> <laughs> we'll take it. But it's true. <laughs> My next pick is out July 6th. This is Over Emotional by David Fenny. This is listed as the wholesome queer YA adventure of the year. So I did have another not thriller, but this is a YA fantasy. It is described by William Hussey as an epically exciting, utterly unique debut that is not to be missed. Sometimes emotions can be a little too powerful. 17-year-old Stephen has a big problem. Whenever he feels intense emotions, weird things happen. Like when he kissed a boy for the first time and the boy's head literally exploded. Fleeing to the miserable town of Gruns beyond the sea, Stephen is determined to not hurt anyone else. But he doesn't count on his best friend Freya, her boyfriend Marcus, and American friend Troy following him. And when agents of the mysterious DEMA organization show up talking about neutralization, Stephen realizes that Gruns Beyond Sea might not be the safe haven he'd hoped for. The first in a wholesome queer YA fantasy trilogy packed with magic, lovable characters, and big plot twists from debut author David Fenney, it's perfect for fans, hmm, this is where it's no surprise that I picked it, 
uh, perfect for fans of TJ Klune, Rainbow Rowell, and Adam Silvera. So uh, if you like any of those folks, this one might just be for you. That is Over Emotional by David Fenny, out July 6th. Yeah, what a weird pick for you. None of that sounds like anything you would like. <laughs> what? Queer teens with powers similar to TJ Klune, Rainbow Rowell, and Adam Silvera. Right. I'm really branching out. But you know what? We love that marketing and that PR when they know right. those sort of staple authors or staple traits that we're going to look for in new and other things because they know how to get me. And the cover is really fun. Um, I like the the way that they've harnessed or kind of shown whatever his power looks like it just seems uh like it'll be a pretty fun one yeah it looks so cool my next pick is not going to be a shock to anyone it's immortal longings by chloe gong this is out july 18th sometimes i truly wonder how chloe gets so many books written and manages to make all of her social media content and go on book tours. And she's like super young. You know, it's not at all jarring to see someone with so much success when they're like 24. Doesn't make me question what I've accomplished in my life at all. But <laughs> she is back with her adult fantasy debut, Immortal Longings. This is a first in a trilogy, uh, once again, inspired by Shakespeare. Uh, that is kind of her thing. This one is inspired by Shakespeare's Antony and Cleopatra, which I think is a really interesting one to utilize for inspiration. This follows a girl, Princess Kala, who is set on destroying the monarchy and ending her cruel uncle's reign. So she teams up with an exiled aristocrat named Anton. There are deadly games. That sounds familiar and like... Uh, you know, up our street, but there are deadly games. People have special abilities and powers. There's a bit of a love triangle and everyone might be working together, but they could also have very different goals in sight. All of those elements combined make up immortal longings. This I know is hugely anticipated release. I think folks are going to lose their marbles over this book as well. So again, that is immortal longings by Chloe Gong out July 18th. Chloe is giving us all the content we could ever want. She really is. I love following her on social. It's just so entertaining. So I guess I'll uh, take a really extreme pivot back to thrillers. Uh, this one is out July 11th. That is Thicker Than Water by Megan Collins. Two sisters-in-law find themselves at painful odds when the man who connects them, the brother of one, the husband of the other, is accused of a brutal crime in this twisty thriller from author of the exceedingly entertaining The Family Plot. Uh, thank you, New York Times, for that quote. Julia and Sienna Larkin are sisters-in-law, connected by Julia's husband and Sienna's brother, Jason. More than that, the two are devoted best friends and business partners, believing that theirs is a uniquely unbreakable bond. To Sienna, her protective brother can do no wrong, and although Julia knows he's not perfect, they've built a comfortable life and family together. Recently, Jason has been putting in long hours to secure a promotion at work, so when his boss is found brutally murdered, his lips sewn shut, the Larkins are shocked and unsettled, especially as local gossip swirls. A few days later, Julia and Sienna's lives are upended when Jason gets into a car accident and is placed in a medically induced coma. Worse, the police arrive with news that he's the prime suspect in the murder investigation. With Jason unable to respond, and with Julia and Sienna working to clear his name, the two women find their friendship threatened for the first time. Sienna staunchly maintains her brother's innocence, but as their investigation uncovers a complicated web of secrets, Julia is less sure she's willing to defend her husband. So uh, with her signature moody and atmospheric writing, Megan Collins has crafted a rich, gripping story that explores just how fragile our closest bonds can be. That is Thicker Than Water by Megan Collins out July 11th. Little family drama thriller? Okay. I Yeah, I don't have to say it, but I will. I love a good domestic familial thriller. Yes, sign me up. It is always a good choice in my opinion. 
my next pick does actually go along perfectly. Now, this is a book I have talked about before. If you remember, we did an episode all the way back in January about our most anticipated books of the year. And as you know, I love a good marital thriller and I love this author, Samantha Downing. So my next pick is A Twisted Love Story. This book is out on July 18th. And here, as you are often going to find in a good domestic like marital thriller, we have a picture perfect couple, Wes and Ivy. They have that perfect love story. They're so in love. It's almost over the top. When it's good, there are flowers and romantic dates and endless deep conversations. But when it's bad and they fight, the fights are cruel, the property gets damaged, and folks might end up arrested. So we've got two extremes here for this picture-perfect relationship. They're seemingly sort of stuck in this cycle of on again, off again, great and terrible, until suddenly they have a common enemy. A detective is looking at them very closely because the night of their worst breakup, someone ended, someone ended up dead. Can they come together and survive the watchful eyes of a high-profile police investigation? Who died and why? All of these questions and more will be answered if you read A Twisted Love Story by Samantha Downing. This is out July 18th. I have been waiting months and months and months for this book to come out. I am eager for other people to read it and discuss. Yes, we want all of those answers, please. Yes. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Uh, My next pick. Also, I want to believe much anticipated by so many folks because this is book three of the One of Us is Lying series. If you loved Karen M. McManus's series so far, you don't have to wait too long for book three out July 25th. This is One of Us is Back. Third time's the charm. It's been almost two years since Simon died in detention, and the aftermath has been hard to shake. First, the Bayview Four had to prove they weren't killers, then a new generation outwitted a vengeful copycat. Now the entire Bayview crew is back home for the summer, and everyone is trying to move on. Only thing is, this is Bayview, and life is never that simple. At first, the mysterious billboard seems like a bad joke. Time for a new game, Bayview. But when a member of the... of the Bayview crew disappears, it's clear this game is serious, and whoever's in charge isn't sharing the rules. Or maybe there aren't any. Bronwyn, Cooper, Addie, Nate, Maeve, Phoebe, Knox, Lewis, Chris, everyone's a target, and now that someone unexpected has returned to Bayview, things could start getting deadly. The thing is, Simon was right about secrets. They all come out eventually, And Bayview has a lot still hiding. So that is One of Us is Back by Karen M. McManus out July 25th. That is book three in the One of Us is Lying series. If you uh, have not read books one and two yet, oops, spoilers. I I love these because it's like, it's Pretty Little Liars. Let's be real. It's an updated, more thriller focused Pretty Little Liars that I think is... I think it's still very like similar, but it it takes a a great step back and it makes it more about a group of just kids in general instead of like a like a dark version of the click, mm-hmm. if that makes sense. Yeah. So, if you haven't picked these up yet, I don't think that description was too spoilery. So just uh, you know, start with book one and join me on July 25th for book three. Yeah, but also didn't they make this into a show? Yes, or their main. Was it only one season? I feel like that's a show that's been on my list to watch, but I just absolutely have not gotten around to it. Same. Oh, they did two seasons. Okay. Okay. I think. Ooh, okay. that might be the vibe. <laughs> right? I know. As I'm like, oh, okay. It's a Peacock original uh, based on the 2017 novel of the same name. It looks like. October, okay. So October 7, 2021 was when it was first released, and then 2022 was season two. Interesting. Okay. Yeah, it, it's, I don't know. It's also been on my TV watch, yeah. my TV watch <laughs> list for a minute. 
but I really enjoyed the books. Like I, I, they're a fun series and I was a sucker for Pretty Little Liars. <laughs> so in that vein, my next pick is actually perfect and something that we would both enjoy. I'm positive. And it is the St. Ambrose School for Girls by Jessica Ward. I'm holding up a copy because I've had this copy for months and have not had a chance to read it yet. And I'm sad about it, but I am hoping to read it before it comes out because what is the point of getting it early if you don't read it before it comes out? But this comes out on July 11th. Now, Jessica Ward, you may know under the other name that they write under, which is J.R. Ward. Uh, If you don't, definitely look it up and check out those books written under J.R. Ward as well. Lisa Gardner, the, another prolific thriller writer, says that this book is like Mean Girls meets We Were Liars. Really all it took for me to be sold. But if you'd like some more information, we have a coming of age novel. It's set at a boarding school. It's again written by the author J.R. Ward, who writes under Jessica Ward in this instance. This follows main character Sarah Taylor. She arrives at the exclusive St. Ambrose School with a lot of baggage, both literally and figuratively. And she's not like the rest of the girls at school. Her clothes are thrifted. She wears all black. She's recently figuring out how to cope with a bipolar diagnosis. There's a lot going on, all thrust into a brand new school. So that's difficult. Uh, If we remember the teen years, none of the teen years are fun. All of that said, it makes her a prime target for the queen bee mean girl on campus, Greta. Greta pretty much makes it her life's mission to terrorize Sarah. Sarah finds some allies in her roommate, Ellen, aka Strotz, and the hot RA, Nick Hollis. Um, But in classic boarding school fashion, or at least as I understand how boarding schools work, there is a huge scandal that blows everything up and someone ends up dead. Naturally, all of those things sound intriguing to you as they do to me. We love something set at a boarding school. This is the St. Ambrose School for Girls by Jessica Ward, and this comes out on July 11th. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes, please. (laughs) Yes, please. Yep. Ah, sold. Done and done. I will be there. <laughs> I also assume uh, all boarding school opportunities include either an evil to defeat, a murderer, dead body, like some type know, of scandal, right? Some, some type, type of, of scandal. Evil, We've got to take down that murder. one teacher that we all hate, you know. Yeah, it's always so dramatic and heightened at boarding school. Oh, well, you know, I went to public <laughs> school then. <laughs> I know, same. <laughs> My next pick is Their Vicious Games by Joelle Wellington. This one is out July 25th. A Black teen desperate to regain her Ivy League acceptance enters an elite competition only to discover the stakes aren't just high, they're deadly. In this searing thriller that's Ace of Spades meets Squid Game with a sprinkling of The Bachelor. So, hmm, I think this pick is right in line with (laughs) our, our vibe right now. You must work twice as hard to get half as much. Adina Walker has known this the entire time she's been on scholarship at the prestigious Edgewater Academy, a school for the rich and mostly white upper class of New England. It's why she works so hard to be perfect and above reproach, no matter what she must force beneath the surface. Even one slip can cost you everything, and it does. One fight, one moment of lost control leaves Adina blacklisted from her top choice Ivy League college and any other. Her only chance to regain the future she sacrificed everything for is the finish, a high-stakes contest sponsored by Edgewater's founding family in which 12 young, ambitious women with the exceptional promise are selected to compete in three mysterious events, the Ride, the Raid, and the Royale. The winner will be granted entry into the fold of the Remington family whose wealth and power can open any door. But when she arrives at the finish, Adina quickly gets the feeling that something isn't quite right with both the Remingtons and her competition. And it soon becomes clear that this larger-than-life prize can only come at an even greater cost. Because the finish's stakes aren't just make or break, they're life and death. Adina knows that the deck is stacked against her. It always has been. So maybe the only way to survive their vicious games is for her to change the rules. That is Their Vicious Games by Joelle Wellington, out July 25th. That gives me major selection series vibes. 
obviously, uh -huh. but it also reminds me a little bit of these, what is it? These hollow vows. Yes. By yes. Lexi Ryan, just sort of like that whole premise of like court and young ladies, like, I don't want to say on display, but like, yeah, pretty much in competition. Right. We've got the things. like cotillion vibes, but only at the stakes of this changes your life if you win. It's like a dash Hunger Games with, right, everything you've referenced. I think this will be a lot of fun. Um, I also really like the cover. I like the cover a lot. This looks great. Perf right. Perfume bottles, bright, vibrant pink against like a deep green, the pearls, the nail polish, like love it. Agreed. Speaking of favorites, my next pick is A Game of Gods by Scarlett St. Clair. This comes out on July 25th. Now, this is a much awaited final installment for her Hades saga. So you may know Scarlett St. Clair. She was on the podcast back in December of last year for a different book series, The King of Battle and Blood and Queen of Myth and Monsters. But she is I think first known for her retellings of Hades and Persephone. She has the Hades and Persephone series, and then she has the Hades saga, which focuses on not just the love story in Hades and Persephone, but on things from Hades perspective. To note, because I know people will be interested in knowing, this one is told from multiple points of view. If you're unfamiliar with the series, uh, Hades is the god of the dead. He has finally made Persephone his in every way possible. With their wedding on the horizon, the couple should be ecstatic. But Demeter is wreaking havoc on their bliss by battering the whole of New Greece with erratic and dangerous weather. At the same time, Theseus continues with his agenda against the gods, allying with the hate group Triad in an effort to bring down all of Olympus. Hades refuses to allow anything to stop him from securing Persephone as his bride, but he must play a deep strategic game with the gods of Olympus to safeguard their future. And it is not entirely clear which gods are truly on his side. If you are eagerly awaiting the conclusion to the Hades saga, A Game of Gods by Scarlet St. Clair is out on July 25th. You won't have to wait that much longer. I made Joe pass away by saying Theseus because I we all struggle with the Greek names, to be quite frank. And you can hear that in no more apparently than in our Greek myth retellings episode we did earlier this year. Oh, there's a blooper <laughs> waiting to be revealed right there. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but yes, uh, Scarlet St. Clair fan favorite. Definitely check out her new book on July 25th. My next pick is out July 18th, and there is no doubt that fans are eagerly awaiting this title from the New York Times bestselling author of Mexican Gothic and the daughter of Dr. Moreau. This is Silver Nitrate by Silvia Moreno Garcia. I'm going to say it right off the bat. I love this cover because it combines so many cool like art elements, but also it's Silvia Moreno Garcia. I am pumped for this. Montserrat has always been overlooked. She's a talented sound editor, but she's left out of the boys club running the film industry in 90s Mexico City. And she's all but invisible to her best friend Tristan, a charming, if faded, soap opera star, though she's been in love with him since childhood. Then Tristan discovers his new neighbor is the cult horror director Abel Ureta, and the legendary auteur claims he can change their lives, even if his tale of a Nazi occultist imbuing magic into highly volatile silver nitrate stock sounds like sheer fantasy. The magic film was never finished, which is why Ureta swears his career vanished overnight. He is cursed. Now the director wants Montserrat and Tristan to help him shoot the missing scene and lift the curse. But Montserrat soon notices a dark presence following her, and Tristan begins seeing the ghost of his ex-girlfriend. As they work together to unravel the mystery of the film and the obscure occultist who once roamed their city, Montserrat and Tristan may find that sorcerers and magic are not only the stuff of movies. So that is Silver Nitrate by Silvia Moreno Garcia out July 18th. I mean, come on. We have this listed as horror and thriller, but you know, we've also got what sounds like a bit of the supernatural. I am 
so excited for this. There are a couple different movies and other books that come to mind with the idea of a project left unfinished and like a curse to be lifted, especially around movies and missing scenes. So I'm really excited to see Sylvia's take on this. And again, I have to reiterate that the cover of this is very cool. So cool that like 50s almost pop art. Yeah, it like mm. reminds me of like Hitchcock, uh, like yep. the Vertigo poster or it's whatever. very Vertigo, yeah. So good. My next pick is The Duchess Effect by Tracy Livesay. This is out July 11th. So this is the sequel to American Royalty that came out in 2022. You may remember the stunning cover on that one. And so this one is no exception. We pick up exactly where we left off in American royalty with Danielle, aka the Duchess Nelson. She's an American rapper. And we have Prince Jameson, a very private British royal. Uh, They're in love. Uh, You saw their love story unfold in book one. And here in book two, we pick up and they're in love. And they want to take their relationship public. And that's always the struggle, isn't it? Putting their relationship under the spotlight. So as they navigate that spotlight, their relationship and all of the folks that either disapprove of them or worse, want to use their relationship for their own gains, Danny and Jameson have to figure out if their love is enough to conquer all of those disparate obstacles. Basically, tale as old as time. or modern time. Uh, If you know who I'm referencing, you better. But um, this book also has some sexy twists. And I did say sexy on the podcast. (laughs) And um, yeah, so The Duchess Effect by Tracy Livesay. This is out July 11th. I love a royal romance. And I do think it is intriguing to revisit the romance where that is their happily ever after. They are together. What comes after that? Who doesn't love a royal romance? Also, what is scarier than making the relationship Facebook official? (laughs) That's immediately what came to mind. Yes. (laughs) Right. Oh, no. Oh, my gosh. Making it official on Facebook. That's Uh like taking me back. (laughs) Right. That's how you knew it was real back in the day. Yeah. Or like the dramatic, like the drama of people changing their status. It's complicated. It's complicated. (laughs) So yeah, if we were in peak Facebook era, I feel like this would be them putting it into in a relationship. And then after everything that they endure, it changes to it's complicated. Uh Uh-huh. Absolutely. (laughs) Joe, what's your what's your next pick? My next pick, I am very intrigued by this concept because it's an MTV fear novel. This was my first time seeing one of these, and I'm super curious to know that MTV is putting out books and I want to see what all of that is about. But this is out July 25th, another big pub day for the month. This is Infested by Angel Louis Coulomb. So Infested expertly mixes mystery and monster story with family drama and very now political concerns. It's a thrilling, I can't stop reading page turner. If Infested doesn't make your skin crawl, check your pulse. That is from Paul Tremblay, of course, best-selling author of The Cabin at the End of the World and A Head Full of Ghosts. Now, I'm going to read the pub description, and once again, y'all are going to be shook as to why I would ever think to pick this book, because um, it's the taking of Jake Livingston meets Cemetery Boys in this YA ghost story about a Puerto Rican teen's battle with a malevolent spirit targeting his apartment building, and the all-too-real horrors of gentrification. Oops, two books I love, uh, including that recent read of Jake Livingston. I'm I'm not predictable in the slightest. (laughs) It's the summer before senior year, and Manny has just moved from Texas to the Bronx in New York. So instead of hanging with his friends and making some spending money, Manny is forced to do menial tasks in his new home, a luxury condo his stepdad is managing, while stressing about starting over. Thankfully, he meets Sasha, who is protesting the building but turns out to be really cool, and he strikes up an unlikely friendship with Mr. Muller, the building's exterminator. Maybe life in the Bronx won't be so bad. Then the nightmares begin, and Manny swears he has roaches crawling under his skin. When building contractors start to go missing, Manny and Sasha come to the terrifying realization that Mr. Muller is not who he says he is, or rather, he is but he died decades ago in a fire exactly where Manny's new building is located, a fire that Muller set. 
Now, in a race against time, Manny must rescue his family from a deranged specter determined to set the Bronx ablaze once again. That is Infested by Angel Louis Coulomb, out July 25th. Um, if you didn't get it from, from that description, it's horror. So there's some, some creepy things, uh, some body horror elements. If, if that's not your thing, uh, just keep that in mind. A very creepy tale. Pivoting again back to a romance. This book is so good. I'm going to start with that. Forget Me Not by Julie Soto comes out July 11th. I don't just read it, buy it, borrow it in Libby, put it on hold now. You're hearing it here first. Get the to this book. It's been a while since I've had a romance book that I've enjoyed this much. It's so good. I'm like struggling to speak it how good it is. So this follows Ama and Elliot. Ama is a wedding planner. Elliot is a florist. I'll let that sink in for a second. They end up working together on the Sacramento wedding circuit until their relationship dramatically ends and years go by without them speaking. Since we've seen them together, uh, Alma has started her own wedding planning business and has the chance to grab a huge celebrity wedding for the makeup guru and social media sensation Hazel Renee. She lands the big wedding, but there is one problem. Hazel's fiance, Jackie, insists that they use blooming for the flowers. And you guessed it, it's Elliot Bloom's floral shop. Alma's put back into his radar and they have to work together on the biggest wedding of their careers. This could be huge for her wedding planning business and for his floral shop. They have to just suck it up and work together. This is told from present day Alma's point of view and past Elliot's point of view from when they were first together. So I love the juxtaposition of that where we have Elliot's chapters that describe what happened with them and we have Alma's chapters that go over what is currently happening. And as the book goes on, you get to that that point where suddenly all of the pieces are fitting together. This is an absolutely perfect grumpy sunshine romance. It's also got wedding planner vibes and is a true love letter to the city of Sacramento, all of which I love being a Sacramento adjacent native. That is Forget Me Not by Julie Soto out July 11th. So, so good. Read it. Place it on hold. That's all. I love that. I am going to make sure I don't lose the thread and start talking about makeup influencers on uh, on the pod. <laughs> <laughs> but it's like a, a good touch of like, I don't know. It's very modern. It's very now. Yeah. I, I love that concept. I, I think all parts of that are too perfect from event planner to how, oops, how did we end up back together after all this time? And I'm sorry, I'm holding it up that to Joe. Cover. The cover. <gasps> And it's called Forget Me Not, which I think is perfect with all of the floral references, all the flowers. The cover has flowers on it. You'll see that Elliot uh, is in a drawing on the cover and he has some gorgeous floral tattoos. Yep. Into it. Love it. Yep, Ooh, 10 yep. out of 10. I might have to read that one. And you know, I'm I'm not a romance. I'm not a romance stan. I would <laughs> highly recommend. It was a very quick and compelling read. And it was so good, funny well-written. And I do just love a grumpy sunshine. And, um, Ooh, I'll tell you off, off pod Joe, so we don't spoil it, but there are some <laughs> other key tropes in here that I really enjoy. Ooh. Okay. We've got good tropes coming too. Oh, mm, fantastic. All right. I will pivot us yet again, not back into thriller, but into a graphic novel. This this title is out July 18th by Julio Anta. This is Frontera. So this graphic novel follows Mateo as he makes a dangerous journey back home to the United States through the Sonoran Desert with the help of a new friend, a ghost named Guillermo, in a supernatural borderland odyssey by debut graphic novelists Julio Anta and Jacoby Salcedo. As long as he remembers to stay smart and keep his eyes open, Mateo knows that he can survive the trek across the Sonoran Desert that will take him from Mexico to the United States. That is, until he's caught by the border patrol, only moments after sneaking across the fence in the dead of night. Escaping their clutches comes at a price. Lost in the desert without guide or water, Mateo is ill-prepared for the unforgiving heat that is sure to arrive come sunrise. 
With the odds stacked against him, his one chance at survival may be putting his trust in something, or rather someone, that he isn't even sure exists. If you'd asked him if ghosts were real before he found himself face to face with one, Mateo would have wouldn't have even considered it. But now, confronted by the nearly undeniable presence of Guillermo, he's having second thoughts. Having spent his entire afterlife guiding migrants to safety, Guillermo knows things about the Sonoran Desert far beyond what could be explained by a mere hallucination. But even as Mateo forms an uneasy partnership with Guillermo, survival is still uncertain. The Sonoran Desert, with its hostile temperatures and inhabitants, is teeming with the danger of border patrol as well as rogue militias as they prowl its deadly terrain. As his journey stretches on, Mateo will have to decide exactly what and who he's willing to sacrifice to find home. That is from Terra, out July 18th, uh, by Julio Anta. That sounds great. Yeah, I, I love the illustration on the cover. I'm excited to see like all of this represented in a graphic novel, because I think as it is, this would make a really compelling novel. So the, the graphic idea seems fantastic to me. Um, and I should say, this is by Julio Anta and Jacoby Salcedo. Um, sorry, I need to mention both of them. <laughs> I love that it's a graphic novel as well. And that's definitely a format that I want to read more of. So I always need to turn to you for recommendations. I got you covered. <laughs> my next pick is a little bit outside of my normal wheelhouse, but it's been on my radar for a very long time. This is Nothing Special by Nicole Flattery. This is also out on July 11th. We see the big pub dates here in the month of July. Imagine the setting is New York City and it's 1966. 17 year old May lives in a rundown apartment with her alcoholic mother and her mother's sometimes boyfriend, Mickey. She's turned off by the pretty girls at her high school and the sleazy men she typically meets. When she drops out of school, she's presented with a job offer that will remake her world entirely. She's hired as a typist for the artist Andy Warhol. Warhol is composing an unconventional novel by recording the conversations and experiences of his many famous and alluring friends. Tasked with transcribing these tapes alongside several other girls, May quickly befriends Shelley, and the two of them embark on a surreal adventure at the fringes of the counterculture movement. Going to parties together, exploring their womanhood and sexuality, this should be the most enlivening experience of May's life. But as she grows increasingly obsessed with the tapes and numb to her own reality, May must grapple with the thin line between art and voyeurism and determine how she can remain her, her own person as the tide of the 60s sweeps over her. That is Nothing Special by Nicole Flattery out July 11th. It may not be in your wheelhouse, but that sounds fantastic. <laughs> like, ooh, yeah, bring me that, please. I, I love the 60s. I love Andy Warhol. The vibes of like Studio 54. All of that just sounds so good. And this is a debut novel, so uh, they- I keep saying more things I love. <laughs> and, well, and so like think Sally Rooney mm -hmm. or Mary Gateskill, like th this definitely falls in that vein um, where you've got that sort of smart coming of age story set in a pretty iconic moment in time. That sounds fantastic. Ugh. See, sometimes we we just come here to recommend books to y'all, but at the end of the day, end up recommending books to each other. Just to each other. <laughs> we know the vibe. <laughs> we know what we can get the other to read. All right. I'm bringing to the table A Guide to the Dark by Miriam Metuai. This is out July 18th. We've got a horror thriller YA. You can check out of Room 9 but you can never leave. This is The Haunting of Hill House meets Nina LaCour in this paranormal mystery YA about the ghosts we carry with us. Something is building, simmering, just out of reach. The room is watching, but Mira and Layla don't know this yet. When the two best friends are stranded on their spring break college tour road trip, they find themselves at the Wildwood Motel, located in the middle of nowhere, Indiana. Mira can't shake the feeling that there is something wrong and rotten about their room. Inside, she's haunted by nightmares of her dead brother. When she wakes up, he's still there. Layla doesn't see him or notice anything suspicious about Room 9. The place may be a little run down, but it has a certain charm she can't seem to wait to capture on her camera. If Layla's being honest, she's too preoccupied with confusing feelings for Mira to see much else. 
But when they learn eight people died in the same room, they realize there must be a connection between the deaths and the unexplainable things that keep happening inside it. They just have to find the connection before Mira becomes the ninth. Readers won't be able to put down this tender thriller that includes over 30 interior black and white photos by the author. So a little cool fun bonus that there are actual black and white photos from the author inside the book. I think that's really cool. This is A Guide to the Dark by Miriam Metuai out July 18th. Emma and I have both been in kind of like a gothic horror thriller kick lately as well. And this seems to kind of scratch that itch as well. But like we've got that Bates Motel locked room. The room itself is a character as well motif. Yeah, I love that. And I think it's really cool that she utilized her photography background in her debut novel. So cool. Speaking of cool books, this is my final pick for July. I have to say I was immediately drawn to this book by the cover. Our friends at Simon & Schuster did a presentation on this many moons ago. And for those of you that have not looked this up yet, I would. But it is the book is called Ripe by Sarah Rose Etter. This is out July 11th. And the cover is like the inside of a pomegranate all the seeds. It kind of looks gory a little bit, but you know that it's not just a piece of fruit, but the angle, the way that the word ripe is centered over it, it very much caught my eye from the get-go. So ripe by Sarah Rose Etter follows Cassie, who has her absolute dream job in Silicon Valley working for a startup. Silicon Valley is a very weird place where there are both extremely wealthy people and extremely poor people in constant contrast. As if this dose of reality isn't enough, Cassie's got to cope with her constant companion, a mini black hole. It feeds off of her anxiety and depression, growing larger the more anxious and depressed she becomes, and then at times getting smaller when those are not her primary emotions. So things for Cassie reach a boiling point. She's been in her dream job for over a year now, but illegal activity from the CEO of her company sort of comes to a boiling point. Cassie also find out, finds out that she's pregnant, all of these things going wildly at the same time. And she has to make a decision about what is truly worth it. Is your dream job always the dream you thought it would be and all of these other things. So uh, the This book is described as sharp, but vulnerable, funny, but unsettling. Both of those two things. Like I love the juxtaposition of those items. Um, And it just sounds like a truly unique take on a story that we are not entirely unfamiliar with sort of that Silicon Valley dream life, that tech startup life. I like the little bit of I don't know quite yet if it's going to be like supernatural twist of having like a mini black hole as your companion, but some sort of like fantastical science fiction thing going on there. So um, yeah, this is Ripe by Sarah Rose Etter, July 11th. That's so cool. I love when novels take something that is so amorphous and that we feel within ourselves and then personify it in one way or another. I mean... The idea of anxiety can feel like a black hole and actually having one with you. I'm really curious to see how that impacts the journey. Same. And certainly I do think it's funny. Um, Emily Austin, who's the author of everyone in this room will someday be dead, uh, wrote one of the pull quotes on the book. And it says, I was sucked into this novel like a black hole. Ripe is brilliant, a distinctive, sharp, engrossing window into late stage capitalism. So again, combining quite a few elements of modern society into what I think will be a really unique take. Yeah, that's my final pick for July. What is your uh, bonus take for July, so, Joe? Yeah, I I saw this. I couldn't pass up the chance to call it out. And it's not often that we bring up juvenile titles and especially not picture books. So I really wanted to shout one out. Uh, for the July month while while y'all are in summer mode. If you've got kiddos at home, this book may just help you out if there is a rainy day. This is There's a Beach in My Bedroom by Kevin and Danielle Jonas. Yes, that Kevin Jonas. Uh, As it says on the the cover, international music star. So one of the Joe Bros. uh, And this is illustrated by Courtney Dawson. 
So this is an imagination focused picture book about how to overcome the rainy day doldrums and find the fun in every situation. Bella loves the beach. She loves the flip and flop slap of her feet on the sand. She loves the crash, crash, crash of the ocean waves. And she loves the gentle shush of the beach umbrella in the breeze. But a rainstorm hits and Bella's perfect family beach day is ruined. This day is rainy, awful mess. But maybe a little imagination and a loving family can show Bella that a beach day at home can be its own special kind of fun. So that is There's a Beach in My Bedroom by... Kevin and Danielle Jonas, illustrated by Courtney Dawson, out July 11th. Yes, I'm so glad you put this on here. I had completely forgotten that this comes out in July. I love the Jonas right. Brothers and the Jonas, I don't want to just say and the Jonas Wives, Danielle, uh, Priyanka, and Sophie. Love everything about this. So I, I couldn't not include it. But that wraps up our July book picks. Emma, thank you for sharing uh, with me today. Thank you. I think we just made our to-be-read lists even longer than they already are. Yes. Here comes another notes app apology from both of us. Oops. Sorry about your TBR. I know. Sorry, not sorry. <laughs> but also, you, if you don't want to be influenced by it, listen to it now and then... Make a tag list. Later. Yep. <laughs> if any of these sounded good to you, make that tag in Libby, pop them in there. And when you're feeling the vibe, you know, you've got some PBN book recs to pull from. Exactly. Thanks so much, Joe. This was so fun. Thank you, Emma. And thank you all so much for listening today. Remember, Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok are at ProBookNerds, or you can email professionalbooknerds at overdrive.com. Thank you all for listening and happy reading. Readers can sample and borrow the titles mentioned in today's episode on Overdrive.com or in Libby. Our library friends can purchase these titles in Marketplace. Professional Book Nerds is proud to be an Evergreen Podcast signature program. To learn about other Evergreen podcasts, visit evergreenpodcast.com. Our podcast is produced, recorded, and edited by Emma Dwyer and Joe Skelly and presented by Overdrive. To learn more, visit professionalbooknerds.com. 